What's up viewers, in this video we're going to install a front facing camera. In this video we're going to install a front facing camera connected to the aftermarket Decita head unit. In the second video where I covered the features of the aftermarket Decita head unit, we had the ability to see the back end of our RAV4 without putting the RAV4 into reverse. Using some available accessories by Dasaita, we'll be able to see the front of our RAV4 through the same sort of interface built into the Dasaita head unit. This is a great feature to have if you did not pay for the technology package by Toyota. The technology package offered by Toyota gives you a bird's eye view around your RAV4, and this accessory by Dasaita will give me a, an additional view that I didn't have before. This install process is only compatible with aftermarket head units for your Toyota. It doesn't specifically have to be for the RAV4, but I'm doing it because I have the RAV4, and I'm going to connect it to the Decita head unit, although I imagine it would work with other aftermarket head units. If you are using an OEM Toyota head unit, I will evaluate how to install an additional camera so you can view it on your head unit, but it won't be in this video. I am still trying to evaluate which parts I would need to make it happen without cutting any wires. Also, another note, this right here is the true gap that you get with the aftermarket head unit. It is not that significant gap that I had in my second part of the video. I just had it uh, not pushed in all the way. The camera accessory comes with the camera itself with a mounting bracket and two holes so that we can screw into some panel. And then it comes with the uh, video signal and the power. So you need to send power to this uh, camera, which I believe can be done through the back of the uh, head, head unit. It also comes with a very long extension cable so that we can go from the head unit to the front of the RAV4. Over here we have what connects to the head unit and then a power cable to provide power to the camera um, when, it, when you, you know, press the button to get the signal. And then on the back side we have the yellow that the video for the camera itself and then the power as well. So these two will connect like this to here. This is your camera. There are these two leads as well if you want to power it differently, I suppose. I'm gonna so far ignore these two, two cables. And then on the back side, we have our exposed power cable and the, the video signal. In the next part of the install process, we need to see where we can put this. I want to put it in such a way that I don't have to remove this bumper because that'll be a lot of work for, for this effort. And I'm probably also going to try to stick it somewhere over here. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the cover over here, which is done using a flathead screwdriver and popping off some trim clips. We have to remove the hood latch, so you'll need some bolt socket wrench type of system. And then we're going to unscrew uh, two spots over here. We're going to use a 10 millimeter socket to remove two screws up over here. And then we're going to use 10 millimeter socket to remove the hood latch as well. You'll want a short end to kind of fit into this tight space. With the hatch out of the way, we can now lift this piece out and slide it out and, and remove it. To make sure about this filter, pre-filter over here. And there you have it. So now we have full access behind the bumper. So we can kind of situate ourselves somewhere around here to, to install the, the camera. Yeah, if I look back here in front of that front plate, there isn't much going on. So. I think uh, installing it here is the way we're going to we're going to go. So we got the camera mounted and installed. It did come with some some two screws that we can use and it worked out just fine. So that's what it looks like. Give you a couple different angles. Doesn't look too great, but it is there. And then from the inside you can kind of see where I screwed into it right here in these two locations. So the sensor is up here, so we are way out of the way, so I have nothing to really worry about in this case. 
and the wires are brought back. The extension cable is really long, so we'll have enough length to go from the camera all the way inside of the firewall or through the firewall into the dash cam. Both tips, unfortunately, are large. So we cannot go through the firewall through the open nipple. We have to kind of pinch it between the grommet and the, the frame of the RAV4. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of push it in through the side and then pull it out behind the glove box. Since one side only has one connector and the other side has two plus this large one, we're going to start from outside of the vehicle and push it into the vehicle with just this piece. It'll be a lot easier that way. We got the camera installed and it's mounted to the bottom part of our sensor and there is no um, interference with the stuff that's going on uh, behind, this, behind the Toyota emblem. The wire comes down over here, kind of fishes over here and then behind here it connects with the extension wire down in there. And then I have it running behind my fuse box relay over here and then through the grommet. I don't leave any slack over here, I try to avoid it. So most of, the, most of the slack is behind the glove box. And then from the glove box, we're gonna connect it to the head unit just as we did earlier. If you look at the wiring diagram for the back of the head unit, we have a wire harness D, which we installed in the previous videos. This is used to supply the video signal from the reverse camera through the cam in signal. What we are using in this video is the wire harness A, for the front camera, this F cam power is to supply power to your front camera. And then down here is F cam in. This is used to supply the video signal to your head unit from your front camera. You also have a third camera signal input, auxiliary video in, that you can supply a third camera and use the app on the head unit to see the video signal from this point. But you do need to supply power to that camera through some other method that is not available from our head unit. If we take a look at what takes place behind our head unit, we have this wire here, which I connected in the previous video. This is for the rear camera in, labeled as cam V in. We need to use the other wire harness that I didn't have installed before because I was not using the speaker setup. This is to set up your front camera in. It is labeled as F cam in. So the camera connects to this, which I have wired from the firewall grommet behind the glove box up over here where my wires are coming through. So the front camera that I have on my uh, front bumper is this one right here. And then to power it, there's also a power one as well to supply power, which is this F cam power. So this is just a wire that I needed to um, connect together with the front camera wire. It looked like this, something that you need to take the, the cap, you need to remove it. You need to strip the wire to expose the copper and then connect that copper with the copper of the front camera together and then tape it so that it doesn't short itself. This will be a live 12 volt wire. So you wanna make sure you do wrap it up really well and so that it doesn't make contact with any other uh, grounding surface on, on, the, on the car. So this right here is just uh, overall another wire harness that we need to shove behind this rat's nest. We connect this to the back of our head unit and then we should have access to the front camera by using the uh, front camera app. The head unit itself accesses the front facing camera through uh, several different options. The first one is through a built-in app called FCAM that I have a shortcut on my uh, front display. It's also built into one of the apps uh, in the unit. So if I press the FCAM, you will see the front facing camera. However, I have noticed that it is frequently inverted. So you can see my shed is on the right side. However, in the real world, it's on the left side. You can undo this by pressing the icon over here to re-invert it. Oops. Uh, this is not always permanent, so you should assume that's always going to be inverted, unfortunately. And then if you click on this icon over here, this can see your reverse camera while the car is in park, reverse, or drive conditions. If I put the car into reverse, it will show the reverse camera. And then if I put the car into drive, 
you will see the front facing camera again inverted but it is a unique feature so that when you go from reverse to drive you got a quick maybe three to five second view of your front uh, bumper area you can change the settings on that to adjust the timer by going to the CAN bus settings to go to the CAN bus settings we're gonna go into the settings which is over here for me in my um, Nova launcher then we're gonna go to car we're gonna scroll to the bottom click on factory settings the passcode for all head units is one two six press OK and then you come into the CAN bus settings where you can do several more adjustments um, over here it just gives you a bunch of I don't know things yeah, you can change the car logo if you wanted you can change your radio depending on which country you're in if it's not set up correctly uh, you can change how much audio uh, comes out depending on what um, you enter how you interact with if you have a TV uh, video signal with audio coming in the radio a DVD hooked up uh, then you have the CAN bus settings Mine is set up to 08 Toyota Camry and RAV4 Simple. You might want to do that if you don't have that selected already. Uh, then you can do some key settings as well. I haven't played with this. And then over here on Other, if we scroll down, we have Front Camera is on. And then over here, Switch to Front Camera after Reverse, 6 seconds. I can click on this and change the amount of time I want the front camera to display after coming from reverse. So I have it at six seconds, but you can go down to one second. I found that six seconds is, is plenty. And then we click apply. Uh, and then we exit. So that's how you would adjust the timing from reverse to drive and then see the front facing camera. Again, see it inverted itself. So we'll put it back. That is everything I believe you need to know about installing a front facing camera. To those of you who have selected to go with an aftermarket head unit, you should first make sure that your head unit has input signals that allows for other camera inputs. I know that Decida has it as we demonstrated over here, but there are several other aftermarket head units available for the RAV4. So make sure you check the back panel of it before you go through this sort of um, work. In this video, we installed the front facing camera right under the sensor. We ran the wire on the side of the grommet of the firewall, ran it behind the glove box, ran the wires to the head unit, which is a pain in the butt, by the way, because the, the, the video, the, the cable head is slightly large. So you need to find a way to kind of work, your, work it up all the way over here. Uh, we had to connect it to a different wire harness that I wasn't using before. So now you have more wire harnesses connected to this, which creates a little bit more difficulty stuffing all the wires back there. But once you have everything hooked up, it works perfectly. I'm very happy with this head unit and all the other features that come with this. It's a full-on Android tablet onto the display with all your car um, accessories into it. Um, so you can do a lot while driving or you can be safe and just use it like you, like you should be using a, a head unit for your vehicle. That's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one.